Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk with Lisa. It's so good to have you here with me. Um, well, it is end of August, and I thought, what is apropos to talk about? And just yesterday, I had an email from a client, longtime client, who is coming in, and this time, bringing her daughter in. And I just wanted to say this because it's so good that people who have benefited and they keep coming back and referring clients, but this one, it was, uh, she's bringing her daughter, an older daughter, not a young kid, for a fear, fear of insects. So I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about fear and what fear is and how through hypnosis we overcome them. And before I go, do you have fears? Do you have fears of things that to a lot of people, it's not norm? Like, why would you be afraid of swimming? Why would you be afraid of a little dog? Or why would you be afraid of... Um, like an insect you know fear is such a this it's it's a something that no one can um analyze it because we have we all have fears like if you're in the jungle and you see a bear of course we're going to be afraid of it but if we are in a hotel and we see uh, a, a little baby bear, we go, oh, look at that cute little bear. When we go to the zoo and they are behind the cage, like koala bears, big bears, it doesn't matter, even a, a tiger or something, we are mesmerized by their strength, their bodaciousness, their beauty. It is just like amazing creatures. So I think fear is something that we analyze and have created in our life due to something. So some fears are harmless and there are fears that turn into phobic reactions. Fear of heights is a natural state. If, uh, if we go to the elevator and we are going up and down the elevator, knowing that the elevator is safe, we are protected, then the fear is much less. But like there is this elevator that you go to uh, and if it is all mirror and you go and stand at the edge, even at the edge of the elevator and it's not mirror but glass and you can see everything below, what happens is that this perception, our body, our balance because we're not used to it there is this certain balance thing that happens as as if i'm going to fall then the logic turns around and says but i am safe and that in itself is a whole different thing than not knowing what to do with a small little insect because we can kill it. We are bigger. We are huge compared to this little insect. So all fears are harmful, but no fear is harmful. It is harmful because we create it in our mind. It is our mind in a way that plays tricks on us versus the reality of what is. And there are times that what we create and what we implement to our subconscious mind, which remember how I say that our subconscious mind and our body never ever does anything to harm us, but to protect us. So if, what if a fear truly is a metaphor to protect you from you, from something else? Hmm. What a concept, right? So the work that I do through hypnosis is tap into the subconscious mind, which if you were to think knowing computers, your subconscious mind is the processor. 
The motherboard is the body. Hmm? Good analogy. In all the files or every single memory, every single file, every suggestion, every thought, every idea, every concept that has been placed in through the motherboard into the processor, what we call it the CPU, right? The control processing unit. Wow, I'm becoming so techie. I'm sure all you techie people will enjoy this. So unlocking phobia, because there is all kinds of fears and I wrote it over here so that I can glance and I wanna make sure at the end of this session, I wanna do a very easy, simple guided visualization so you too can let go of certain fears either real or perceived now for example if a four-year-old has not been conditioned uh to walk or something and they come and they touch fire and they burn their hand the next time they go anywhere near fire they will be zapped and they are afraid to go anywhere near the fire. But what if they come anywhere near close to it and the parent screams? No! That scares a child. The sound of the mother screaming, the sound of that shock system also penetrates to every single antenna, the antenna, which is the hair on our body, and the body, having the biggest organ on our body is our skin. So when the antennas on the skin stand up and they go into this shock system, the body remembers. So unlocking the phobias, there are few things that create phobic reactions or fears. And let me give you one of them. Your phobia may be the product of a severe stress. That screaming of a mother can create such a stress factor that either fire or a dog or a cat or anything or even water going near the water. If the parent has the fear and the way they scream, they create that same um rippling effect for the child to be scared of make sense so that's one it's not their own fear it's not the fear of the child but it's the fear of another person that because of their own fear the child may not always may take upon themselves to be of afraid of the same thing. Hmm. So that's one. The second is your phobia may be the product of series of, of uh, experiences occurring over a period of years, and it builds up and builds up and builds up. The rippling effect it becomes like a domino. What we are afraid of one thing one time. And then we become afraid of something else, like a car accident may send a shock system, that shock through the antennas that goes like this. And that shock system stays in the body, in the motherboard. And if and when they get into a car and the car starts driving faster than what they think it's normal, the rippling effect, that essence of that shock comes and sends signals, signals to the conscious level. So it's automatically what? The body is going into protect mode, all the antennas get heightened and they go freeze, 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 because they think another may happen again. To calm that down, we're going to get there. So I'm giving you all the processes of why some fears may occur. Now, your phobic reaction or may your fear may be a product of a fear 
of a fear, being afraid of being afraid. It's so simple. Um, that stress threshold, when it becomes so thin that you're constantly thinking, your mind becomes so immersed into, but I am afraid. I can't think of anything outside of, I am afraid. Here's an example. If you go somewhere and there are two elevators, hmm, you're standing in front of an elevator and one elevator has that tape across and it says out of order. The other elevator is on the fifth floor and it hasn't arrived on ground level. And here you are, you have to get to the sixth level or the fourth level, it doesn't matter. And you don't know where the stairs are, but you have to get to it and you keep pushing that button. You know what? The elevator is out of order. But if you're afraid of taking the stairs because of height and you need to get into the elevator, guess what? You freeze in front of it. And it could be vice versa. There's people who go up and down the stairs. They'll probably go about eight floors up, but not take an elevator thinking that the elevator will break or drop. Why? As a matter of fact, this is a reality because I had a client, uh, this happened to them. They came over here with fears of elevators, getting into elevators, even to second floor. Because when they were young, I mean, talk about five years old, they saw this movie and in the movie, these people were stuck in an elevator and they were screaming. And I think it was a horror movie, whatever it was, that there was someone that the elevator opened and I think something like Jason, it started knifing them. And this kid was so horrified that the image of the stabbing and it's all in the movie and he's sitting here watching that movie so immersed that horror thing stuck with him and to him it was i will never get into an elevator and that is exactly what he thought what he immersed into and what he made it as a conviction i will never ever step into an elevator why because that if I step into an elevator, it might happen, it may not, but it may happen. But a perception of a little boy was that it will. And that scared him and he froze in front of that movie and that thing was embedded in him. And of course, when we watch movies, most of the time it's not light, it's not sunny. And he got scared. He didn't have dreams, but getting into elevator, what happened? The motherboard, the body started protecting him. And every time he wanted to get into an elevator, he would go into this freeze point and crying. Until he was 14 and they came. At 14 years old, he overcame the fear of elevator for us to bypass that information. See, he didn't even remember it. It was through hypnosis. And what hypnosis is, as you know, I've explained it, is tapping in from our logic mind into bypassing the motherboard and going into the processor, that chip that has all the information, stores every single thought, every idea, every concept, every image, every feeling, that memory bank. And just like that computer, that there is a processor, the motherboard, and the files that we put in there, every thought, every idea, every concept is a file. So we did a timeline therapy, which I like to call it, go back to another time, go back to another time, go back to another time. Until we remember, he remembered, not we, I wasn't there, until he remembered that night. Being a little boy and seeing that movie. Wow. 
and now being 14 and being a Boy Scout, wanting to excel and become an eagle, hmm? he had to overcome that. Isn't that amazing? Isn't it amazing what your mind is capable of doing? I wonder. Let me see. Seda says, we had a relative who had a little girl and the father was threatening her. If you do this, if you do that, I'll throw you in the pool. So one day she got burned with the hot water and the father rushed her to the pool to cool off her. But she thought she was, oh my God look at what we do exactly exactly and the father but she thought she did a bad thing that's why her father is taking her to, uh, to the pool and she died from the fear of that moment <gasps> oh you know that is so sad it's so sad how we adults, let me say this, if you have not realized until now, words are the most powerful things in life. Words can create, words can destroy. I've been talking about words because every, I'm going to put my cup away because I don't want to spill that coffee on me because I'm going to get really <sighs> words can break and shatter even an adult not only a child this reminds me of another child if a child goes to school and this is just far-fetched, but this was a reality that the teacher did not like this child for whatever reason, just didn't like this child. And every time that child was in that class, the teacher would literally belittle that child or say something derogatory and nasty to that child. And this kid was the nicest kid ever. So the grades started getting worse and worse and worse. And at home, the parents are like, this kid would ace in everything except that one class. And the, they just could not figure it out. I mean, it's like, why is it that you cannot understand the most simple little thing? Why is it that you're not working harder on this? And they started blaming on the child until they, they asked the child, why? I hate my teacher. Why do you hate your teacher? Nobody else in that class hated the teacher except you. Why do you hate the teacher? And not realizing that the teacher did not like this kid for whatever reason. I know the answer, but it doesn't matter here. And had the angst with this kid. It was not about the child. It was about the teacher for whatever reason, had an angst and took it on this kid. And you know what? Destroyed the child, destroyed the kid and his morale for that class, for that course, until the parents had to pull that child out of that class. And even the principal got involved. At first, they couldn't understand it because nobody else had a problem. So the kid was acting up at home. And I like to call it, maybe it's not the parent, but be aware. Cousin, siblings, believe it or not. Yes, parents, step parents. There is one out of five, four out of five children that are being abused, either emotionally, physically, or mentally. Physically is usually the last, mentally and emotionally. And I'm not even going 
Today is not the day to talk about abusive relationships with adults, but children. So words truly impact children. Children from the age of one to seven are nothing but sponges. They take everything in. So when a parent says something derogatory or negative, they take it in. Remember, I've taught about this with parents who bring their children to me. I see a lot of kids. I see a lot of teenagers. I help them shift their patterns, behaviors, habits, because it's so much easier to work with children. They're still so vulnerable and accepting and want something better and good and loving. So the next one is phobic reactions result in severe they come from severe trauma. It's so true. Trauma that it's affecting, it's creating them fear when they are in an abusive family and situations. That is fearful. So what happens? Their body cringes. They go into hiding. They go into their own safe place just to protect themselves. Right? I want you to become more aware, maybe of your own fears, maybe fears of children, youngsters. Think about your fears, if you have had any fears or phobic reactions to certain things. Like the client that was here, the 14 year old, fear of insect. She was more afraid of walking into cobwebs because the cobwebs are just, and I asked her, what do you think of it? And it's like, oh my God, they're like trap. I'm going, but they are making home. That's what they're doing. They're beautiful. It's like, a, you know, it's like a dream catcher, but it, they're creating their home. So the cobweb in a way is to capture all the small little insects so they can eat and she didn't know about it but all she could think metaphorically it's a trap so by doing this therapy is recognizing why she feels so much fear and what the metaphor of trap is and what she felt trapped in it was amazing I'm getting emotional because her the way she came through that and she recognized and understood what symbolized a trap for her beautiful beautiful so i asked her if she could in her own image in her own mind consciously and subconsciously think of it as exactly what it is yes trapping insects but it's not a trap for her and she is bigger than that. She can just slay it and kill it if she needs to. But at the same time, recognize the beauty of what that is for that animal. It's not about her, it's for that animal. And if she sees it somewhere, she can just kill it. And if she sees a spider, she can stomp on it. Hmm? And when she recognized that she has power, oh, it was the most empowering thing. The smile. And she started laughing because we gave her a magic wand to the little girl so she can just go zap. We adults, we forget we can zap certain things away. So let me see. My father almost walked into an elevator that just as he turned to talk to my mom suddenly plunged eight floors. That can create, that in itself can create something that if a child was witness to that, it would create fear, yes. So how can we 
overcome fears. First is illogical fears like this that we get so engrossed in it and um, it takes up our time that we are so immersed into it that we don't realize we think about it obsessively and that thing becomes obsessive and that thing becomes what well, now there is a term called OCD that is constantly being afraid of being afraid being afraid of what it it is being afraid of what if it's right here what if this elevator breaks what if this spider what if right all the what ifs is recognizing fear in itself is truly false emotions appearing real it's not a reality except in our brain in our mind and we create it we make it bigger than what it is to safeguard and protect ourselves so the next time think about it what if it doesn't happen the way I asked it or thought it or imagined it hmm? what if right because if it is a false emotion appearing real then it is not reality is it true it's not here then it is not real it's here Some people say it's my fear blocking me to move forward. Fears of success, fears of marriage, fears of intimacy, fears, and it can be everything. And all of them are there to protect you and safeguard you. So how do we get rid of it? You may want to first identify what caused the fear, right? So think back, recognize, realize, and if you can't, that's what hypnosis and hypnotherapy truly does that for you. Because it really creates a sense of being in prison of your own mind, of your own thoughts, right? You're not free. You're not free to do the things you want to. So what better if you start writing if you were to let go of this fear, how would you be free of? What would you do with this freedom if this block, if this fear was no longer there? What would you do? How would you feel? How would life be better for you? So I want you to write it. I mean, take a pen and paper and just think about it. Write it. Become more conscious of what you think are the negatives, the blocks, the fears, and how would you feel if it was no longer there? Second, instead of confronting it, saying, oh, no, I can't, I want you to be aware of the fear when you are experiencing it. And if you come across an elevator or something like that, have someone who has no fear go in and step into it with them. And instead of looking out the window, if there is any wind, I mean, the glass, or looking at the door or whatever, if you could just stand there and think to yourself, if they're safe, I am safe. If they're safe, I am safe. If they are safe, I am safe. And the next thing you know, the elevator door opens. If you are in the park or anything like that, if there is other people, just think of it. If they are safe, I am safe. If they're okay with the insects and this, I am okay. I am okay. I can handle this. And when you want to think about handling it, just go like this. And you see the palm right here. This is like a trigger point in acupressure. This is like a stress pointer. And all you have to do is either massage it like this, like playing the accordion. Or you can go like this. I can handle this. And it can be anywhere. If you think that you are somewhere, that just go like that. 
And if you are amongst people and they're going to be looking at you odd, you just go like this as if playing the violin very gently. No one would know what you're doing. And this pressure point, you're massaging it. And you're concentrating on this. And while you're concentrating on this, believe it or not, it's like your conscious hypnotic way of relaxing yourself. Some people do this. The mind and the body, as you rub it, just concentrating on this or bringing it very close to your ear. And as you do that, the sound of the two fingers just rubbing against one another. And just close your eyes and become one with that sound. And believe it or not. You can let go of the first feeling of what you thought fear is. That impact will diminish, will calm you down, and you will be more in control and you can handle it. Now, by increasing your self-confidence and knowing that you can handle it, you can overcome many fears. And today, I want you to close your eyes for just a second, a split second. Just close your eyes and open your eyes. Close your eyes and open your eyes. And do it again. Close your eyes, smile and open your eyes. Close your eyes, smile and open your eyes. I know this feels weird, but close your eyes and open your eyes. And guess what? It will become so annoying. And some people may say, that's stupid. Yeah, but that's that little stupid thing, that annoying thing may make your little girl, little boy inside, that little child with it, start laughing and you go, whoa. And why is it that we're doing this? Because every time we close our eyes and go into darkness and open our eyes, we smile. It's like we're smiling. And that in itself creates like when I feel going into that darkness, when I see nothing or I see uh, what I thought it was fearful and I open my eyes and I smile automatically I'm creating this new cycle of I'm okay I can smile I'm okay I can overcome I'm okay I can handle this hmm? so knowing that and the last thing is reprogramming your subconscious mind and that is by Truly doing meditation and overcoming through hypnosis, your own self-hypnosis. You can even write it and reread it and implement it every day in every way. I accept and appreciate myself far more deeply than ever before. Every day in every way. I recognize I can handle this far greatly, far better, far more than ever before. Every day in every way, I stand up and recognize that I am bigger than all those little things. And what used to be in the past a block, a fear, today I release. And I grant myself permission to be free. <sighs> free of obstacles created by me for me. I am bigger. I am an adult. I can handle this now. So with that, let's see if there's any questions that I may ask.
for answer actually there is nothing to fear but fear itself that's always helped me that's right federal um uh, roosevelt said that um exactly and uh scott says beautiful i appreciate myself amen mark um adrian and there you go mark says i mean dear <laughs> preach it <laughs> So sweet of you. So I hope today's message was beneficial to you. And I want to let you know that for you to remember, you are only one thought away from transforming from, pe from pain to gain. And any time that you want to heal within, you have to re recognize what is paining me. And what would the gain be? How will I benefit if I am free of this? Right? So, until next week, I thank you for being present, for being here. God bless you. And may the universal light surround you. This is Lisa. It's time to heal with it. Bye-bye. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.